Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining my session today at the ASL and Technology Conference. Uh, it'd be great to be over in Scotland, seeing you all in person, but of course that's not possible at the moment. So, it just thanks the guys at Call Scotland for for arranging this today and giving us this opportunity to connect. So, my name is Andrew Campbell, and I'm Schools Business Manager for Text Help. So, I look after local education authorities in Scotland and multi academy trusts in England. Um, so I've been working for Textile for about nine years, and a lot of that has been spent as account manager for Scotland. So I'm sure a lot of you will know me by now already, but for anyone that doesn't, my contact details are along the bottom of the screen there, and that's my Twitter handle as well. So please give me a follow. And the guy on the other side of the screen is my Bitmoji, whose hair is considerably tidier than mine at the moment because he doesn't need to get to the barbers. I'm just going to actually knock off my camera now so that you can see the, the slides okay. Today I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of our products, which are RIQ and Read and Write. I'm going to talk you through Read and Write to begin with, and then my colleague Gustavo, who's our RIQ product manager, is going to talk you through through RIQ. And we're connecting the both in terms of how they help students with writing and also providing literacy support tools. Our our products uh, cover a, a wide range of ways of how we support students, but um, and want to kind of focus in on one particular area for today which is in terms of writing so as we go through please do sort of keep in mind as well obviously uh, remote learning is, is a hot topic at the moment and something that's uh, coming up more and more and looks like it's here to stay as well so um, all of our products can be can be used in terms of remote learning they're really helpful for remote learning really and we're we've actually we have a lot of uh, a lot of interest and at the moment a lot of good feedback on how students are using them at home and teachers are using them to share work with students and and the workflow in place where they can share work and receive it back so um just i i'll point to a few ways how read and write can help in terms of remote learning just something to bear in mind as we go through so as i mentioned mostly today read and write on RIQ, but if anyone is looking for a digital miles tool equatio is ideal uh, for that particularly say in terms of remote learning if you're find that i know a lot of Math teachers are finding it difficult to set work in a digital format and receive it back in a digital format. Equatio is the ideal solution for that. You also have Snapverter, which makes inaccessible documents accessible, and Fluency Tutor, which is a reading assessment app. So a student, uh, a teacher has access to over 500 reading passages, which they can choose from and share with their classroom. The, the class then can record themselves reading and send it back. Each student can record themselves reading and send it back and the, student, the teacher can go to market. So a really nice tool at the moment for anyone who's looking for resources and an easy way to get resources, but also to connect with your students and hear your students' voices and, and as well again. So today is mostly going to be around Read and Write on RIQ and their place within the writing process. So Read and Write from a drafting, writing, and revising and editing point of view, and then RIQ in terms of actually giving feedback for students and allowing teachers an easy way to assess the writing and also providing students with, with greater motivation in terms of writing. I'm going to focus mostly on Read and Write. So for those of you who've never seen it before, Read and Write is a software toolbar that sits on top of whatever it is you're using, be it a Word document, a Google Doc, a website, a PDF. It's just there to support you. And it works across multiple platforms, iPads, Google tablets, uh, Chromebooks, Microsoft, whatever it might be, it works across them all and students can use them at home. And there's lots of different support features on Read and Write. So there's loads of different loads of different features, and they can be they can impact the writing process in different ways. You'll see them kind of scattered through the middle there, and, and different stages that the features of Read and Write will support the writing process. I'm going to focus on a couple today just to give you an idea, flavor of how it works. Um, but you're available to to take on a trial of this at any time. So please get in touch if you if it's something you're interested in. First one I'm showing you there is, is the research side of things. So a student's doing some research on, on an assignment before they start writing it. So they're getting the, the information together and what they're going to write about. They can use the highlighters that are built in with, with Read and Write. So go through on a website, highlight loads of different notes, same way you would have done with your, your textbooks. Use the highlighters on there and highlight those different bits of information that you're going to write about. And once you've all your highlighting done, you click on Collect Highlights, which is the kind of circle icon with the different colors. And that's going to bring all of your research into one place for you and it's all going to be nicely color coded and it's going to give you a bibliography as well and um, so that the students have that all then in one place you see that's it you click on it collect highlights 
and it brings it all into the one place all color coded for you um, another nice one is the vocab list so you highlight use those highlighters again to pick out certain words so from even from a teaching point of view at the moment if you're at home and you're setting a writing assignment for your students you can highlight those words and uh, ones that you know they might find tricky and click on vocab list and it brings them together and it's going to put them the words the definition and the symbol so those students that are used to having somebody there supporting them with those words that they didn't weren't too sure of that's going to be a nice way for them to kind of to see those words see the picture see the definition and, and know what the word is it'll also help inform their assignment that they know that they're writing about that particular topic those are the words that should be coming up you also have word predictions when it gets to the point of actually drafting the assignment for those students who've done the research, they now know the topic, they know what they want to write about, but actually writing that topic uh, can be quite daunting for them. Again, they maybe don't have that same support that they would have had with the learning support assistant at the minute. They can go in, click on word prediction as they start typing, same as what you get in your phone, it's gonna bring you up different words, but that's gonna be very helpful for those students who say know a topic, but struggle to actually write it down. So you'll see it here now on the screen, you click on the word prediction icon, and as you start typing, it brings you up different words. And if you can get the student can get the first couple of letters of the word reading the first letter, it's going to bring them up. And the more they use it, the more uh, accurate the predictions will be as well. And they can listen to the word. They can use dictionary with the word so they know. They can scroll through and see, yes, that's definitely the word that I want. And then from a feedback and review point of, part of view, when we get to the end of the writing process, they've gone their first draft and you as a teacher want to send some feedback, click on voice note, record your feedback and send it to them. Um, as, again, it's a nice way for students at the moment to hear that, hear their teacher's voice, hear that feedback, rather than getting you know reams of writing for feedback. So we're the quick way of doing that. Just a quick note um, in terms of our PDF reader. Um, this is on the remote learning side of things. Um, a lot of people just aren't aware that it's something you can do. And obviously a lot of people are sharing PDFs at the moment. You have a great resource on PDF, you want to share it with your students but they can't really do much with it when they get it. If they use the PDF reader from Text Help, they can go in, type into it, to draw on it, use you know, picture dictionary, use dictionaries, use translators, and uh, makes it so much more interactive. So just wanted to share that with you as well. Just gonna hand you over to uh, Gustavo now to talk through RIQ. Hello, thank you for watching this webinar. Thank you, Andrew, for having me. I'm pretty sure that most of you don't know me yet. Um, my name is Gustavo and I joined Texel pretty much a year ago. I am RightQ's project manager and on screen you have my contact information. So feel free to drop me a line for whatever you need and I will be more than happy to give you a hand. So very briefly in the next few minutes I will give you an overview of what RightQ can do. RightQ is our writing achievement tool and I want to show you how RightQ can help students getting more engaged and motivated with their own writing and how it can help teachers assessing student writing and tracking progress. Okay, so I will switch off my camera so you can have a better view of the presentation and continue. All right, so first of all, what is RightQ? RightQ in a nutshell, if you're a Google user, you will be able to find RightQ in the Chrome store and add it to Google Chrome as an extension. If you're a Microsoft Word user, Microsoft Teams user, you will be able to find RightQ in the Microsoft store as an add-in. Then you will see that RightQ has three different parts, the teacher experience, the dashboard, and the student experience. The teacher experience is all about assessment, scoring, and feedback. It will help teachers save a lot of time while assessing documents because it automatically detects spelling, punctuation, and grammar. It includes uh, mark schemes that calculate automatically as well the scores and help creating consistency across students and classrooms. And finally, it allows teachers to send personal messages to students after they have scored a document. In the dashboard, teachers will find a lot of information and insights about their students and how they're writing. It's a very good place for identifying struggling writers. And then we have the student experience, which mixes a little bit of notch psychology, a little bit of gamification with the idea that by simply getting students to write more, write more words, write more often, that ultimately will lead them to write better. Let's remember that writing is a skill like playing a new instrument or playing a sport. 
students need to constantly work at it to improve. So the truth is that students can have all the technology in the world, but if they don't write more, they won't get better. That's one of the, of the first things that we wanted to achieve with WriteQ, that students write more. In order to show you how this looks, I have created a new Google document and WriteQ appears here right away for the student. This little box here is what we call the WriteQ meter. In the WriteQ meter, students can track their writing burst while they type. This means how many words they can write without taking a pause or a break. Being a pause or a break something between two and three seconds. So let me show you how this works. Keep an eye on the write queue meter while I type. While I type what I am saying now, you can see that the write queue meter goes up 16 words but now we'll get reduced to 15 because write queue meter is not recognized as a correct word because it's not in the dictionary and the write queue meter only counts uh, correct words so that was my burst 16 words so why is this important because research tells us that the greater the burst the more fluent our writing is the easiest way to understand this concept, I think, is with the example of learning to speak another language. Um, so when we're learning another language, we want to practice as much as we can. We want to express ideas, have a conversation. And although it's important to pay attention to our grammar and pronunciation, it's not a great idea to be shy about it. It's better to make mistakes while trying to express a thought and learning the process. The same concept applies to writing. Students tend to pause while they write in order to check their spelling, for example. If they do that too often, it will result in less words and most likely in lost ideas as well. That's why we talk about writing fluency. And the write queue meter gives students a little push to get better. It's a small personal challenge to help them become better writers. So the write queue meter in this case is showing me 26 um, words was my best burst today and I have written a total of 32 bursts today. I haven't written too much and that's what's showing me. Now if I maximize this window I will be able to see much more information. It will show me my information about my write you bursts in the week, in the month and in the year. So for example if we take a look at the month I can see how many words I have written in total this month, over a thousand words, which can be very encouraging um, to see how much of work I have done to encourage me to write even more. It will show me my total uh, burst and also the average burst length. So for example, in the last few weeks, I've been getting better. My, my average burst length has been going higher, which probably means that my fluency is improving a little bit. It also shows me the subject areas that I usually write about and a word cloud with the keywords that I use the most. We have also included a program of badges and achievements that can be accessed from the achievements option in the menu. So I will open that one so you can take a look at it. Achievements. And here you can see all the different badges I got for different goals that I have achieved. Badges can be earned by burst length, by subject words and by total words typed. Finally, let me show you how the student gets a feedback from a document that you have scored for them. So now I have opened a document called Series and Villains that has been already scored by a teacher. And the only difference in the right queue meter is that little green dot here. That means that I have as a student notification and notification. When I open this, there's a different message here that says you have feedback available. That wasn't there before. Now that we have a document that has been scored by a teacher, there is feedback available. So I can click on view now to see what message I've got for me. So I can see that on the 29th of April, I scored this document, inserted a little message there, well done. And there are uh, there's a nice comprehensive summary of metrics and scores here. There's a mark scheme score. There is a summary of spelling, punctuation and grammar errors, word counts, vocabulary age and time on task. 
all of those all of these things here have been automatically calculated by RyQ so the teacher didn't have to get involved in this and then at the end I can see the detail mark scheme so I got a 4 in this first criteria I got a 3 in this second criteria and I could hover the mouse over the next levels to have a better understanding of what's expected from me and what I have to work on for improvement so that's a very nice part of the feedback because it really tells the student in the areas uh, that he or she has to work on to get better. It's very short time we have here. I won't have the chance to show you the teacher experience or the dashboard, but I think this is going to give you a very good feeling of what RIQ is about. If you would like to learn more about RIQ, please give Andrew or myself a shout and we will be more than happy to help. Thank you. Bye-bye.